And we're back, fans. Are you excited for this episode? I know I am. I just like doing that voice. But what up, everybody? Welcome back to the Alpha Ginger Show. And this is a huge week for a lot of people everywhere because this week starts the fantasy football playoffs. And if you're a fantasy football connoisseur like I am, you made your playoffs. If you didn't, better luck next year. Sorry, not sorry. But if you made it, this is an exciting time you might be the next champion of your fantasy football league. And guess what? I'm here to help you win your league and help myself, but also help you win your league. So in the past, when I would do these videos, I would give you three people from each main category of fantasy football, QBs, wide receivers, running backs, tight ends, maybe defenses every now and then. And I would tell you which ones to play, and hopefully you used them and they helped you win. This week, I'm cutting it down to two per category, but still, I hope my picks help you out through the playoffs. I think if you start these people, you'll see a positive result, and you'll probably end up winning this week. And then I'll try to help you out next week, because if you're like my league, you have two week rounds in your playoffs. So without further ado, I will get to the quarterbacks. So the first quarterback I think you should be looking at starting if you don't have one of the tried and trues like Lamar Jackson or Deshaun Watson or Russell Wilson is Ryan Fitzpatrick. First off, can anybody name a more exciting and more fun team to watch than the Miami Dolphins right now? I can't because they are, they are just playing with just so much energy and so much fun for the game that it, it's just it seeps through the screen when you watch them it just it's so much fun right now and leading the charge is ryan fitzpatrick fitz magic himself he is playing terrific in these last five games he has hit all of his targets that he needs to he is playing with so much heart and so much spirit it just it seeps to the other players around him and you can tell by watching their games. But that's not a reason to start him in fantasy football, right? It, just being a fun person to watch doesn't make you a good fantasy football player. No, but he just scored three touchdown passes against what was supposed to be a good Eagles defense this last week. And not only that, he was on point with all of his deep balls to Devontae Parker and Mike Gesicki. So as long as he could continue to hit his favorite targets downfield, I could totally see him putting up another 20, 25 fantasy points this week against a depleted Jets secondary. And if you recall earlier in the season, the Dolphins actually have already beaten the Jets. So it's not out of the realm to say they could do it again. And the second quarterback I think you should be looking to start this week is Ryan Tannehill. Raise your hand if you thought Ryan Tannehill being signed by the Titans over the offseason would be a good choice for them and would actually be potentially their next find and their next franchise quarterback. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Did you think? Who, who thought that? Uh, I did. Now, am I the only one, though? I think I am. I fully believed that Tannehill being signed by the Titans was going to work out for him in the long run. And it is looking like that so far. By the way, I'm a Dolphins fan, and I was a huge advocate for Ryan Tannehill to stay because I thought he was good. And I'm being proved correct right now. So, But he has, over his six starts as a Tennessee Titan quarterback, he has put together a terrific resume so far. And with the kind of one-two punch he's developed with Derrick Henry, it the Titans offense is clicking on a whole nother level. And also, since becoming the starter for the Titans, Ryan Tannehill has had multiple touchdowns in all six of those starts, which is a terrific boost when you're looking for a fancy quarterback. And let's not forget, he is up against the Oakland Raiders this next week. 
who is allowing the fourth most fantasy points to quarterbacks this season. So now on to running backs. The first running back I think you should all be starting from here on out on your fantasy teams is none other than Derrick Henry. Boys and girls, it's that time of the season again. It is time for Derrick Henry to feast. Now, I have noticed a trend, and I think a lot of others have, that over the last three seasons that Derrick Henry has been a running back in the NFL, it seems to be about this time in the season, for some strange reason, that the Titans are like, hmm, you know what, you know what, you know what would be a good idea? What if, hear me out, we gave Derrick Henry the ball. Crazy, right? Well, no, not crazy, actually, because when you give Derrick Henry the ball, he gets results. Also, if you are living in a cave somewhere, you may not have noticed, but Derrick Henry, over the last three games, has scored over 140 plus rushing yards in all three of those games. Not only that, he has scored at least one touchdown in each of those games, and he is also starting to catch a couple receptions per game. All of this just sounds really good for fantasy. Also, not to mention, even though I mentioned it before, his one-two punch with Ryan Tannehill right now is working wonders for the Titans offense. So I don't see that stopping anytime soon. No matter the matchup, I think Derrick Henry feeds, and he feeds well. And the second running back I think you should be looking to potentially start, maybe as a flex this week, is Kareem Hunt. Now look, I'm not saying that Kareem Hunt is overshadowing Nick Chubb at this point in the season, but ever since Kareem Hunt has shown up on the scene, Nick Chubb's fantasy value has gone this way, and Kareem Hunt's value has gone this way, and it just seems to continue to trend that way. Now, I, for one, will still try to start Nick Chubb if I have him. I would be crazy not to. But I'm saying if you have Kareem Hunt as well, he could be a viable flex opportunity in the weeks to come. First off, since coming back from suspension, the Browns offense has looked way more dynamic with Kareem Hunt as a kind of change of pace back. Not to mention that Kareem Hunt has been getting four to five receptions per game since coming back. And as long as he can start producing touchdowns with those receptions, he is definitely a fantasy option for a lot of teams. Not to mention, he's up against a rather poor Bengals defense this week, so you kind of be crazy not to start it. On to wide receivers. The first wide receiver you should be starting this week is Devontae Parker. Now look, I'm not saying he's the best fantasy wide receiver this year. I'm saying if you look at his points from week one to now, he is one of the most consistent options as wide receiver for fantasy football. Not to mention, ever since Preston Williams went down with an injury, he has quickly become the favorite target for Ryan Fitzpatrick. And coming off of a career day, a huge day, against the Philadelphia Eagles, where he had 159 receiving yards and two touchdowns, he is looking to repeat that success against a very depleted Jets secondary. And as long as Fitzpatrick continues to be an accurate thrower like he was this last week, I could totally see Devontae Parker doing that again. In my opinion, Devontae Parker is a must start this week in fantasy football. He might be the key to some of you winning your leagues this year. I know I sound crazy for saying that, but a Dolphins player could be your ticket to the championship. And then the second wide receiver I think you should be starting this week is none other than Kenny Galladay. I've mentioned Galladay before, and I, I really like him. He's a tremendous wide receiver. But every now and then, he has a flop. Like, it's like every two weeks, he has a flop. And you can't explain it. It just happens. 
I have learned a rule that I have created for specifically Kenny Galladay. Here it is. Set and forget. Simply set and forget with Kenny Galladay. Because I guarantee you the moment you question putting him in your lineup and you bench him for say Tyler Boyd, another up and down player, guess what he's gonna do for you? He's gonna put 25 points up, but he's going to be on your bench. You don't want that. You want 25 points in your starting lineup. That'll win you the week. So start Kenny Galladay. I think with David Blau as his quarterback, he is going to see an uptick in his value. I think David Blau is a much better quarterback than Driscoll was. Not to mention, he is up against the Minnesota Vikings this week. And they are allowing the fourth most fancy points to wide receivers this season. On top of that, if you've been watching in recent weeks, Xavier Rhodes, who I'm assuming the Vikings are going to put on Kenny Galladay, has been allowing some deep balls to get through. And it's it's got to be concerning for him. But good for you Kenny Galladay owners. So again, Kenny Galladay. Set and forget. And then look, yes, I'm a Dolphins fan. I get it. I've mentioned two Dolphins already in this video. But for the first tight end, I think you should be looking to at least have on your roster. And if you really don't have one of the big five tight ends, possibly looking to start this week, is Mike Gesicki. Mike Gesicki this season has turned the corner and he's starting to develop into a really good tight end for the Miami Dolphins. Not only that, but he has also developed this rapport with Ryan Fitzpatrick that has really helped him out in recent weeks. In fact, last week, he had 79 receiving yards and a touchdown reception. It was easily one of his best outings since joining the NFL last year. Plus, as I said with Devontae Parker, as long as Ryan Fitzpatrick stays accurate as he has been in recent weeks, we could be seeing an uptick in Mike Gesicki's fancy value. And then finally, the last tight end I think you should be starting this week is Jack Doyle of the Colts. Last week, since Eric Ebron went out and was put on IR, Jack Doyle immediately became the number one target for tight ends on the Indianapolis Colts. That was a whole jumbled thing I just said there. I'll rephrase it. Jack Doyle, number one tight end, Indianapolis Colts. If you've been following the trend of how the Colts have been playing on the offense in recent years, they target tight ends and they target them heavily. And now that Jack Doyle is the number one tight end, he is going to see an uptick for sure. And it was already showing in last week's game against the Tennessee Titans. So not only is Jack Doyle coming off his season best game so far last week, but he is also about to face a Buccaneers defense that was allowing the fifth most fantasy points to tight ends this season. So if you have Jack Doyle, look to start him if you don't, again, have one of the fab five of tight ends. And that is it, folks, for who I think you should be starting this week in your fantasy football playoffs. If you have any questions about fantasy football or who to start out of your many options of people to start, leave those questions in the comments. I'll try to answer them as fast as possible. I know the decision is hard for a lot of people between certain players, and I will try to help to my very best. But if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button below. Also, as I said before, comment any questions you have going into this week of fantasy football, and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I try to put out these kind of videos every week. Sometimes I don't, especially the last five weeks, but I try to put them out each week, and especially for the fantasy football playoffs, I'm gonna try to put them out each and every week. But, as always, don't quit your daydream. Oh yeah, are you sad?